Easy people, and welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. Um, into Milan, came to town, shut up shot, defended really well. Uh, got a draw at the Etihad in this new league, league formation, gets us a point. Uh, there's been a bit of a meltdown on social media in some corners about uh, the kit, shouldn't have wore the kit. Uh, the atmosphere, etc., etc. So let's get into it. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I always expected a tough game against Inter Milan. We know that they're uh, champions of Syria. I think they won it by about 20 points. We played them in the Champions League a couple of years ago. They were solid defensively. So it was always going to be a case of Inter Milan come to town with a low block and see if Manchester City can get through. Um, it was a very, very frustrating night. We've got to admit that. Um, it didn't help with Kevin De Bruyne and Savio going off. Savio, whether it was tactical, I don't know. Um, but it was a usual case of Manchester City having all the possession, getting around the edge of their box, passing it side to side. There wasn't many crosses coming in the box. And um, on the balance of play, we should have won the game. You know what I mean? Gundogan, Fold, and had some great chances. Uh but then you're always going to get caught out on the, on the, on the counter-attack because we, we're literally all in their half. Uh, Inter could have broke and could have won a couple of times. But the game itself wasn't a classic. It wasn't. It was very tactical, end-to-end. -end, um, uh, sorry, all played in one end. Um, I thought the team he picked was sound. Um, probably the best out there. Uh, could he have started Doku, but... Is Jeremy going to get back and defend? I don't know. Um, I just think the key word was frustration. We came out the ground. I was frustrated. Um, then I'm then I'm going uh, in the car. I'm listening to the radio. I get home. I listen to Peter Schmeichel. So I had me whinge on Schmeichel. We all know about Peter Schmeichel. Yeah. He was Man United goalkeeper and a legend. He came to Manchester City when we'd just been promoted. Right. A lot of Man United fans never forgive him for that. But when we beat uh, United in the derby, 3-1 at Main Road, Peter Schmeichel was doing cartwheels and celebrating in front of the United fans. So his legacy at Man United has been tarnished by that. He's always floating around Old Trafford trying to be accepted. And they still don't accept him. And we don't accept him as well because his stint at Manchester City was nothing special. He was nothing special at the time. For Man United, he was a great goalkeeper, probably the best I've ever seen. But as a pundit, he's shit, you know what I mean? He's, he's always got too much to say. I've been to Old Trafford working for City last year in the derby. He was floating around there like a bad smell. So to come and criticise the atmosphere, listen, we can criticise our own atmosphere, Peter Schmeichel. Do you know what I mean? Every club in the country is having a problem with atmosphere. Every one. There's not one team where you can say every week it's bouncing. It's not. You know, Champions League nights, you've got different problems. People are priced out, 75 quid a ticket, whatever. We've got four own games coming up on the bounce. People are picking and choosing. Um, and the ground is full of a lot of tourists that come on the Champions League night who just want to stand there with the iPads and the phones and film. You're not going to get that um, atmosphere. The South Stand where I was, to be fair, was OK. I thought the South Stand and the Inter fans were having decent banter and I thought it was all right. So... If he had a valid point, which some games at the Etihad you have, they are terrible. And he came at me with that one then. Then I'd say, you know what? He was right. But I thought it was all right. It wasn't the best atmosphere we've ever seen at the Etihad and it wasn't the worst. But the South Stand lower was, was, was at it. And I'm in the South Stand lower. So for me, I'm enjoying the game. I'm enjoying the atmosphere. If you're over in the family stand or a Colin Bell, you probably think the atmosphere is shit. So I get it. But I'm going off my own experience. So I'm in the South Stand. We've got the flags, the banners, the Rodri thing. We're trying to get the crowd going and that. Uh, so for me, my experience was different to somebody sat in Collingdale. Do we need to improve the atmosphere? 100%. How do we do it? I don't know. We've had dialogue with the club. The 1894 have had dialogue with the club. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. You've got people blaming tourists. But then if the tourists didn't come, then the same people would say, I can't go to the match. I can't, I can't afford it. So... Is it better to have someone in the seat or nobody in the seat? You know, the club need the money for that. So I don't know. It's it's a mad can of worms. I'm sick and tired of talking about it, to be honest. You know, I'm one of the only ones that have ever speak out about these ticket issues. I don't see 
any other city content creator talking about it. I don't see anyone trying to make a solution. So it is what it is. But at the end of the day, it's about the football on the pitch. And it was Manchester City nil, into nil. City wasn't good enough. We couldn't get through. And to make it a little bit worse, we've got Arsenal, Sunday, similar setup, better defence than Inter, in my opinion. Last year came to the end, he had stunk it out, sat in their own half, took a draw. Um, I just watched Ar uh, Arsenal last night against Atalanta, similar sort of setup, very, very cautious. Um, I can see that happening again. Unless Arsenal are brave and they're going to go for it, uh, City have got a job to do to break them down. I don't know what um, team Pep's going to pick. I feel like Kovacic might play. I feel like De Bruyne, we're hearing, has got a few injury niggles, so we're not going to risk him. Foden needs to step up. He's been away uh, with illness. He needs to come in the midfield now and make sure you know he starts impacting games. Um, Haaland's probably just going to have a wrestling match with the two centre-backs all game, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing if he creates space for the, for the midfielder to run into. I feel like Bernardo Silva needs to um, play in the midfield. I would probably go a Rodri, Bernardo, uh, Foden midfield. Uh, but then I was thinking about it last night, whether he plays Foden on the right, Grealish on the left, Haaland up front, packs the midfield out with Kovacic, Rodri and uh, Bernardo, which has got a lot of energy in there. That could be one. And then there's another dilemma. Let's not have a bit of my coffee. There's another dilemma with a fullback situation. Do you go for Kyle Walker and the experience and obviously the pace? And we know he's a quality player, but he, he looks like he's slacking off just a little bit. Or do we have faith with Rico Lewis, where if we're going to make him into the fullback we all believe he can be, these are the games he's going to have to start and going to have to play in. So... He's got a tough decision there. I think the centre-back partnership of Akanji and uh, Ruben Diaz picks itself. And Josko Guardiol at left-back uh, is a no-brainer for me. Um, but the Arsenal game is going to be tough. The Arsenal fans for over the last two years have been unbearable. Uh, if you watch last night's Big Six show, me and Turkish got into a lively debate about Arsenal. Um, they don't like the fact that I've said Manchester City are a bigger club than Arsenal. They don't like it. Um, they've got nothing left to argue with. They talk about an invincible trophy that nobody cares about. Um, they haven't won the league for 20 years. You know, they're talking about they've got 13 league titles. Well, we've got 10. Uh, they've got no Champions League trophy. So for me, you can't be classed as a big club without a Champions League trophy. That is what they always used to say to us. Manchester City will never be a big club without the Champions League. Am I right? You all heard it. So now, apparently, that, that narrative doesn't work. Apparently now, uh, it's all about, you know, how many trophies you've won, etc. But we all know it isn't. If you're a big club, it's a lot of things. It's support, it's global fan base, it's stadium, it's history. And it's what mark you've left on football. And Manchester City at the minute are leaving a bigger mark on football than anyone. Do you know what I mean? Pep's philosophy is vibrating around football, trebles, doubles, Four in a row, quadruples, quintets, uh, centurions. All these unique things in football have been done by Manchester City. So, for me, we're bigger than Arsenal now. Things in football change. It's just one of them things. Nobody cares about Herbert Chapman in 1904 or whatever you want to talk about. Nobody gives a shit about that anymore. That's what you used to say to us. It's all about what's happening now. But the thing is, what's happening now is you ain't winning. But you don't want to talk about it. You want to go back to Herbert Chapman. But when uh, you was winning, nobody could mention history. We, we have to talk about the now. So make it make sense. Make it make sense. Go and watch the Big Six show. See what he did. You know, he, he, he's rattled. He's rattled. In an argument with me, yeah, the second anyone calls me Little Steve, yeah, I know I've won because um, Big Steve's not a name that I gave myself. It's a name somebody gave me on a podcast. As soon as they resort to that, I know I've won straight away. That's why you see a smile on my face because, um, yeah, it's it's funny. But watch it last night, Big Six. It was a good debate, to be fair. The show was going from strength to strength. But Arsenal are going to come there. They've got a good side. We've got to be on our toes. You know what I mean? We're going to, we're going to ride our luck a bit. We are. We're going to throw the kitchen sink at it. They're going to get us on the counter-attack. We've got to be careful. They've got some good options, Raheem Sterling, etc. 
Uh, Martinelli's not playing well, but I bet he turns up at the Etihad. Um, the back four, last two games, I've watched them against Tottenham and the Atalanta has been solid. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But one thing for City, I feel like we've got to get them shooting boots on around the edge of the box. There's so many times we get the ball at the edge of the box and you're thinking, shoot, the crowd the other night, shoot, shoot, and they don't shoot. And it's like, it's frustrating. And then you get the ball on the wing and you think, cross it. You've got Erling Haaland in the box, best number nine in the world, cross the ball. He's going to get on the end of them. They don't cross the ball. So it is frustrating. I'm sure Pep has got a plan. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you think about the game Sunday. Are you going to the game? Do you think it's going to be a cagey affair? Do you think I'm talking bollocks? Is it going to be open basketball style game? Let me know what you think. And your lineups. Put some lineups in the comments. Let me think what you what you think. It's interesting to see, you know, the lineups that people go for in these big games. Um, I would probably be tempted thinking about it now to play Foden, Grealish, Haaland up front, Rodri, Kovacic, Bernardo in the middle. And I would go Kyle Walker, uh, Diaz, Akanji, Kvadio, Edison. And then I'd keep my powder dry. I'd keep Savinio. I'd keep uh, Doku. I'd keep Rico, etc. on the bench. All players that can change it, Gundogan, etc. If the game's not quite going right, we can make little tweaks. So that's what I would do. Let me know what you would do. Uh, other than that, the 115 case is underway. And there's not been any leaks coming out of there. I heard someone saying, oh, the Premier League submitted a fake document. It could be all pie in the sky nonsense. I think you're going to wear a few of these fake leaks. Uh, we literally don't know anything. We've just got to sit here and wait. Um, so there's not much to talk about with that. Um, but yeah, I feel like all eyes are on Arsenal. I've done a couple of uh, Arsenal previews this week. There should be a Lad Bible video dropping on Sport Bible. Uh, agree to disagree me in Turkish. Then there should be a... I did a preview with Troops and Big Stricto. Um, all Arsenal content creators on me this week. So you'll see my face about doing that. Um, and other than that, Blues, you know, it's it's all up to us. If we can win on Sunday, that puts us five points ahead of Arsenal already. And I think in their heads, they don't think they can claw that back. Do you know what I mean? If we lose the game on Sunday, we're one behind them. We know we can claw that back. So I think it's important we get the win. If we can get the win, it will um, be a massive psychological blow to Arsenal and their fans and their team. I do believe that. Looking at the table this early on with Man City 5 clear, I don't think they will believe they can do it. I also think that their defence is that good this season. Their attack is very, very toothless and they're very, very cautious. And I feel like the draw against Brighton won't be the only draw they get. I feel like the draws will kill Arsenal this season. That's just my opinion. I feel like they're focusing too much, setting up defensively in shape. They're forgetting that they've got to go and score goals. So, going to be interesting. Going to be interesting. Um, I did have a few other topics to talk about, and I literally can't think what I was going to say. I don't think we have to dwell on it. I don't think we have to dwell on it. It's an important game. It's early enough in the season for both teams to bounce back. Um, and we've just got to go and do our thing. And all I can say to the City fans, if you're going on Sunday, get behind the boys, get behind them. Don't give these media fucking mongs, morons, fucking chance, yeah, to, to get on our club. They stood there, sat there in that stadium, in our own stadium, waiting to pedal some sort of drivel to the masses. So don't give them it. Do you know what I mean? We've been at the Etihad the last few seasons when the crowd needed to turn up and we've turned up, yeah? We fucking bounced it off the walls against Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, you know, big derby games. We've, we've been there, Liverpool games, we've been there. So at the end of the day, Inter Milan on a, on a on a Wednesday night in the Champions League first game is never ever going to be um, a cauldron of fire. It's never going to be that. But Arsenal Premier League Sunday, no excuses. Everybody in your seat early. Get behind the boys and leave it all in there. That's what I'd do. Anyway, boys, girls, lads, lasses, that's it from me. I'll see everybody at the Etihad on Sunday. Um, if you see me come and say hello, um, 
And yeah, we're the champions of England. We've won four in a row. We've palmed this Arsenal team off for the last two seasons. Let's go there Sunday and show them why we are the champions. Come on, sir.